of the Spice Girls. Once upon a time, there was a group of girls. While the rest of the girls of the kingdom hung posters of their favorite hunky knights on their bender balls, these girls aspired to be more than just helpless maidens waiting to be saved. But there was little for a young woman of the court to do back then besides sewing and praying. But then, one of the girls got an amazing idea. They would enter themselves as contestants in Medieval Idol, which was basically just another singing show like The Realm's Got Talent or the Charlemagne stage. They practiced for months leading up to the competition, perfecting vocal arrangements and dance routines, and developing a strong sense of friendship with one another, which was the most important thing to them. The man who funded their training was one of the girl's fathers, a merchant who made his fortune trading in condiments. To honor him and thank him for his patronage, the girls decided to name themselves after him. They came up with a long list of names, including the Chipotle Chicks, the Dilly Damsels, and the Mayonnaise Maidens. But ultimately, they decided that less is more, and they settled on the Spice Girls. They won the competition with flying colors, beating out both favorites, the boy band Squire's Choir and last year's winner Judas Cradle, a heavy metal outfit named after a particularly gruesome tortured device of the time. After winning Medieval Idol, the Spice Girls were invited to the offices of the leading music publication, The Staff Paper. The head of the paper came in and made an announcement that the staff of the staff was not to leave any staffs in the staff room since Steph had just come down with a staff infection from someone's dirty staff. Then he congratulated the Spice Girls on their recent success and told them that he was going to make them stars. They would go on world tour and have lucrative sponsorships with all kinds of companies for things like cookies, supermarkets, corsets, and even this new thing called deodorant. But that never really took off and the company went out of business. Interestingly, that company was called Spice and was revived a thousand years later as Old Spice. The head of the paper assigned them all nicknames and personas. One was Posh Spice, because they couldn't call her Stuck Up Bitch Spice. Another was Ginger Spice, because she was a ginger. Real creative with that one. There was Baby Spice, because she was young and cute and forced to wear diapers at all of her performances following one unfortunate incident that I won't go into. And there was Sporty Spice, because she never really grew out of the cartwheel stage that young girls go through. And finally, there was Scary Spice. I guess because she was black and no one had ever seen a black person back then? I don't know, does that seem racist to anyone else? And the Spice Girls did go on to become the highest grossing female performance of all time. They showed people that it was cool to be a girl and have a unique personality and love your body and have strong friendships with other girls. They make it okay for girls to wear clothes that are comfortable or sexy or fun or funky or whatever they want them to be. Girls don't have to dress like effing beekeepers anymore. And above all, they made it clear what they really, really wanted. And that was to zig a ah. At the 1097 Brit Awards, Ginger Spice famously came out in a red, white, and blue dress that became so popular, the King of England decided to use it as the flag for his new kingdom, which he had won at the Battle of Hastings just 31 years earlier. The group eventually disbanded after becoming stupid rich. They're all doing their thing out of the limelight, except for Posh Spice. She got giant fake boobs, and then she got them taken out. Come back next week when I'll read Protozoic Park, the tale of a family's struggle to escape a remote island nature reserve where the inhabitants have gotten loose and given everyone terrible diarrhea. One day, some bozo drove up in a really nice sports car. Vivian could hear its gears grinding harder than a piss-drunk white girl in the club when Drop It Like It's Hot comes on. <laughs>